Okay, in this last video, we were just looking at the photoelectric effect and a few of the weird things that it actually does. So, uh, just to remind you, photoelectric effect is when photons are incident on a metal surface and electrons are kicked out from the surface. But sometimes, here are the three important things to remember here, that when there's a certain threshold frequency, uh, electrons are not emitted. So these electrons, uh, this is the energy of the electrons, this is the frequency of the light. And it turns out below a certain frequency, nothing happens. Above a certain frequency, everything happens. That's this first one. The second one, above some frequency, the maximum uh, energy depends on the frequency. So that just means that as you get bigger frequency, so once it's started, so to speak, uh, more frequency means more energy of the electrons. Uh, more frequency, more energy. In other words, they're going faster. Now, the number of electrons depends on the intensity of light, not the frequency. In other words, if you want more electrons to come out, you don't have to increase the frequency, you just increase the intensity of the light. In order to illustrate this a little bit better, I want to use a fantastic set of animations. Uh, you can find these. These are called the uh, PHET. These come from the University of uh, Colorado. And if you do a Google search for PHET, you'll find all their different animations. Um, I think they're really, really well done. In fact, this one right here, I think, explains photoelectric effect quite well. Well, not explains it, but demonstrates it. So here we have light. This is just some sort of uh, laser. It could be sunlight. It could be any sort of lamp. And if you look at, uh, we have some sort of material in here. Now, this is probably in a vacuum. We'd probably have to have some sort of window for the light to be able to get through. So maybe it's like uh, made of quartz or something like that here. And here we have different metal plates. And we'll talk about these in a second here. But this is the metal surface here. So what happens, of course, is, well, depending on the intensity of the light, uh, maybe we can have things happening. So I want to, first of all, show you this first uh, concept here. So below a certain threshold frequency, no electrons are emitted. Now, it's important to understand uh, what I mean by frequency because over here on the uh, demo, we actually look at wavelength, not frequency. Okay, so uh, hopefully you know about uh, light right here, how it works. It's in nanometers is what the human eye sees, at least that's visible light. If it's uh, more red than red, we call it infrared. That's why it's IR. If it's more purple than purple, we call it ultraviolet. And things can go all the way, of course, some super extremes way off you know, on either end. But if we're looking at visible light, which is something we understand, remember what a wavelength means here. Wavelength and frequency um, are related by this equation here, C equals F lambda. So that means that uh, the bigger the wavelength, in order to keep C the same, the frequency has to be smaller. So increasing wavelength means lowering frequency, and raising frequency means lowering wavelength. In other words, wavelength and frequency sort of work opposites. And in this case right here, that means that if I've got a high wavelength, that means I've got a low frequency. So we have to think a little bit backwards here, because this concept is all about going from low frequency to higher frequency, means going from a higher wavelength to a lower wavelength. So this one here, going from higher wavelength to lower wavelength, is going to be the same as going from a low frequency here to a high frequency here. So let's just uh, turn on this bulb, so to speak. So I'll make the intensity, uh, I don't know, I'll just make it, this is an arbitrary scale. Here. But So let's say we have red light shining on this surface, and assuming it's made of sodium, nothing will happen because I am at a high wavelength, which means a low frequency. As I decrease the wavelength, in other words, I raise the frequency, still nothing has happened. See, that's because I'm sort of scanning, I'm still along here somewhere. I want to go until the sweet spot right here, until frequency such that uh, this stuff starts happening, these electrons start getting kicked out. So let's take a look here. If I look at it and I have it a little bit further, maybe they'll start getting kicked off here. Oh, now they are. So you see that above this frequency, so from here and all the way up, for example, lots and lots of uh, electrons will be kicked off. So that's just to show you a little bit of what happens here. Now, of course, going back to, let's say, in this green area here, let's take a look at these. So that was the first one to try to demonstrate this first thing. The second one, though, above this frequency, the kinetic energy, the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons depends on frequency. Let's take a look at that then. So this should mean, actually it turns out we can graph this. So it turns out we can graph electron energy versus frequency here. And remember these are in Hertz and these are in electron volts, that strange unit of um, energy. 
which is just one charge of an electron times one volt. So it turns out it's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules is what one EV is. So let's look at this uh, relation here happening, that above a certain frequency, the maximum depends on the frequency. So let's see that happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the frequency. Remember, that means lowering the wavelength, means increasing the frequency. As I increase it, we can see that, look at this graph right here, that the energy is going up. You see this little dot right here? As I go more and more and more, look what happens. Just look at, concentrate on this right here, what's happening on this graph here. As I raise the frequency, I get more and more energy. Remember what energy means, that has to do with the speed of the electron. Now, of course, some of them go slower, and some of them go fast, but uh, most of them are going fast. That's the important thing here. And these ones here are actually zipping along here. So that's the second concept illustrated, I think. The other one, of course, is the number of electrons depends on the intensity of the light. So let's see if we can get that to look uh, like it's happening here. So let's just say we pick some sort of uh, value here. And let's say I have uh, a low intensity of light. So I'll just pick this one right here and let's just see what happens once they've all sort of gone through. So we can see how many photoelectrons are being emitted. So there's some. And if I want to have more, all I have to do is increase the intensity. And do you notice now I've got more of them coming out? So it turns out it wasn't the frequency that did, it was intensity. So if I want more electrons to come out, I increase the intensity and I get more of them. So you see, that's a really good way of illustrating all three of these, I think at least.